Good evening. This, the 104th meeting of the 71st term of the Baltimore City Council, is now called to order. Please turn off all cell phones or put them on vibrate. Meetings of the City Council are open to the public for the duration of the meeting. Persons attending must behave in an orderly manner or are subject to removal. Council chambers must be clear that the conclusion of the meeting, failure to comply, may result in charge of trespassing. Tonight's invocation will be led by Theotis Freeman of Hope Community Ministry. After the invocation, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight, the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by members of the Cub Scout Troop 1000 from the Cathedral of Murray Al Queen, immediately following the prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we come this evening, first of all, to give you thanks for another day that you have blessed us. Now we ask your blessing upon this meeting. We ask your blessing upon each councilman, Lord, that is represented here and upon the president. We ask, Lord, our, your blessing upon our communities, that you would come into our communities, lead and guide us, that we might be a blessing to those whom they have been charged to lead and to guide. Give them power, O oh Lord, but help them to keep in mind that the power that exists is because you have allowed each person to exist in each district. Bless them and guide them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Then we'll be led into the Pledge of Allegiance by our troop. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, too. Thank you. I want to thank the Cub Scout Troop 1000 from Cathedral of Mary Our Queen for doing their civic duty today. Let's give them a hand. The clerk will call the roll of the members. President Young, Kraft, Scott, give Nick Inspector, a give Nick a chance to give me a seat. Middleton, Mosby, Welsh, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Branch Clark, Mr. President, we have a quorum. Thank you. Tonight's showcase Baltimore presentation is Marco Merrick of Alpha Phi Alpha Delta Lambda Chapter. Welcome. Good evening. I'm pleased to share felicitations with you from the more than 52,000 men of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated around the world, men of many colors, races, and cultures. On the threshold of our 109th anniversary, Alpha Phi Alpha is the first Greek letter intercollegiate fraternity established then for African American men on December 4th, 1906 at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. If you might imagine seven African American students at an Ivy League institution in the early 1900s, while these young black scholars were restricted in their pursuits of academic, social, and humanitarian development, and yet their tenacious efforts gave birth to an organization that has supplied voice and vision to the struggle of African Americans and people of color around the world for the past century. Additionally, the seven founders who we call Jewels we can also boast of such distinguished members as Baltimorean, Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall, W.E.B. Du Bois, Martin Luther King Jr., the iconic humanitarian Paul Robeson, and many more giants who have helped shape America. As president of Delta Lambda chapter here in Baltimore City, in the west part of Baltimore City, I'm proud to note that we are the fourth oldest alumni chapter, which is comprised of collegiate men of high accomplishment. In our 96 years of rich history, we have influenced this community 
by the likes of such distinguished members as our founder, Carl J. Murphy, founder of the African American newspaper, music icon, Dr. Nathan Carter, his brother and world-renowned pastor, Reverend Harold A. Carter, Henry Parks, Raymond Haysbert, the late Dr. Levi Watkins, and State Senator Clarence Blount. Currently, among our members are University of Maryland, Baltimore County President, Dr. Freeman A. Rabowski III, Dr. Earl Richardson, the retired president of Morgan State University, the current president of Morgan State University, Dr. David Wilson, Dr. Calvin Burnett, the retired president of Coppin University, Dr. William Heisch, the retired president of the University of Maryland of Eastern Shore, uh, the president of Baltimore County uh, Public Schools, the superintendent rather, Dr. Dallas Dance, and former White House fellow and Rhodes Scholar, Wes Moore. Our chapter is known for more college and university presidents than any chapter in the history of Alpha Phi Alpha, and many distinguished members in the fields of medicine, education, business, government, science, technology, and community service, including our Eastern Region Vice President, who is a Baltimorean, R. Anthony Mills, the Executive Director of the Park Heights Renaissance. I am a native Baltimorean and a product of Baltimore City Public Schools, having gone to Leith Walk Elementary School, Chinquapin Middle School, Northern High School, Towson, then State University, and the University of Baltimore. I am delighted to share with you that we are all holding the light of Alpha by raising the standard of manly, manly deeds, scholarship, and love for all mankind. So I am proud to share with you, because you have a handout at your desk, council members, that we have just initiated 40 more gentlemen into our fraternity just last night. So if I look sleep deprived, I am. <laughs> with more than 150 active members in our chapter at Delta Lambda, we continue to support Baltimore City and our community in a number of ways, including voter registrations, Project Alpha, where we support local school students, the Marion House Shelter for Women, the March of Dimes, Walk for Babies, a national partnership with Big Brothers and Big Sisters, the Comcast Care Days, and a new initiative called the Alpha Esquires Program at Coppin State University, which helps the students at the Coppin Academy. The Voltillion Scholarship, which is our signature program, is what you have a cursory summary of, actually over the past 13 years has successfully assisted more than 200 high school males in the Baltimore metropolitan area to transition from high school to college and forward into successful and productive careers. We have garnered nearly half a million dollars in scholarships for those young men. I'm happy to share also that as the founding director of the Community Concert Choir of almost 200 voices, our lovely mayor's wonderful mother, Dr. Nina Rawlings, is a member in that choir. And that choir collaborates with Alpha Phi Alpha to raise money each fall for our Botillion program. We encourage you to take a look at the Delta Lambda website, which is deltalambda.org for more information. It is my Remarkable pleasure to have been given this opportunity to speak with you, to acknowledge among us the work that we do, but to also acknowledge among you the work that you do and my fellow Greeks who are here in the respective organizations because we're all doing the same by enriching humankind. I commend the city council members for the outstanding work that you do to make my home, Baltimore City, the place that we are proud of. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, uh, Mark, for um, all that the Alpha Phi Alpha um, Delta Lambda chapter does to help um, make Baltimore a better place and for the mentorship that um, you all do on a daily basis. I know that Councilman Scott um, has this mentoring um, program where we're trying to get more male mentors. We have the women that have stepped up to the plate, but we want more men. And I heard you say you were part of the big boys um, organization, Big Boy, Big Sisters. Um, and we want to, as much as possible, reach out to all of the you know, male fraternities to step up to the plate and help us to mentor our youth. We have over 303 murders, I think it is now. And the more mentors we can get 
for our young boys um, and our young men, um, the Marriott. So thank you for everything that you do. Um, it is the council's custom to generalize the invocation. I ask for a motion to generalize the prayer. Motion by Councilman Wells, second by Councilman Henry. All those in favor of generalize the prayer say aye. aye. All those opposed nay. The ayes have it, the motion is adopted. We will now proceed with the adoption of the journal. Mr. President, the journal with proceedings from the November 9th City Council meeting is on the council member's desk. Is there a motion to approve the journal? Motion by Councilman Scott, second by Council Vice President Rossinger. All those in favor of adopting the journal say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carried the journal is adopted. Bills will be introduced. City Council Bill 15-0596, Franchise Mobilité. Ordinance for the purpose of granting a franchise to Mobilité, LLC, a Nevada limited Levite limited liability company with business headquarters in california to construct install maintain repair operate relocate replace and remove certain facilities relating to the provision of a distributed antenna systems services in and across certain streets and public ways certain subject to certain terms and conditions and providing for a special effective date sponsor city council president on behalf of the administration this has been assigned to the housing and community development committee Resolution to be introduced. City Council Resolution 15-0277R, Shop Small, Spend Big on Small Business Saturday, November 18th, 2015, November 28th, 2015. Resolution for the purpose of celebrating the fifth annual Small Business Saturday in Baltimore City, honoring all small businesses for their many contributions to the economy and the quality of life in this country and encouraging Baltimore City residents to shop small, spend big on our city's main streets, downtown shops, and the many varied and exciting neighborhood retail establishments on Small Business Saturday. Sponsor President Young, Henry Middleton, Stokes Costello, Clark Reisinger. Please note Councilman Kraft, Councilman um, Scott, Councilman Kraft, Councilman Mosby, Councilwoman Spector, Councilman Kern, Councilman Welch and Councilman Branch as co-sponsors. Um, first of all, um, we always try, this is the fifth year of this resolution of spending in our main street quarters and our small businesses who are the backbone of the city of Baltimore. Um, they are the ones who really hire people who live in the city and we need to do everything that we can to support our small business. And this is a big way of doing that by making sure that we go there and spend during this week, and we should do it throughout the year, but particularly around the holidays, we try to make sure we encourage our citizens to shop and spend their money right here in the city of Baltimore. And I want to thank all my co-sponsors, and at this time, I recognize Council Vice President Ron Singer. Mr. President, I move to suspend the appropriate rules so that the council can immediately adopt this resolution. Second by Councilman um, Kraft. All those in favor of suspended rules to adopt this uh, resolution say aye. aye. All opposed? All those in favor of suspended rules to adopt this resolution say aye. aye. All those opposed? Nay. Chair recognize Council Pre uh, Vice President Ron Singer. Yeah, Mr. President, I move the resolution favorable. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of adopting resolution 15-0277R say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion carrying this resolution is adopted. You can find this, the consent calendar in section A at the back of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? Motion by Councilwoman uh, Middleton, second by Councilman Kern. All those in favor of approving the consent calendar say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion carried this calendar is approved. Uh, chair recognize Council Vice President Ron Singer. <coughs> Mr. President, this time I move to extend floor privilege to my special guest, uh, Ms. Allie Jones, the oldest living woman in Maryland and Baltimore City. Second by Councilman Stokes. All those, all those in favor of extending floor privileges to my special guest say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion carried, and the guests may, Ms. Jones may take the floor. <laughs> you, you. Mm -hmm. 
you mix it? No? Come on up. Thank you, Jeff, for your work. Okay. Yeah, you turn around. I'm pretty sure she lives there. First of all, um, I want to <laughs> I want to say um, that we enjoyed having Miss Jones at our lunch today. She came and spent lunch with us earlier, and uh, we asked that they bring her back this evening so we can recognize her. Um, we have flowers that um, we want to present to her. 112 years old, let's give her a hand. And um, the name of the home is Erica and Eric, home of, care. home of care. They are the ones, assisted living, in charge of um, the care that Ms. Jones is given. And we have a resolution, um, and it says, the City Council of Baltimore resolution, be it hereby known to all that the City Council of Baltimore offers its sincere congratulations to Eddie Jones, and Eddie Jones, I'm sorry, Eddie Jones, in recognition of your 112th birthday celebration on June the 21st, 2015, and for being one of the oldest residents of Baltimore City and the state of Maryland. You are a true beacon of light. The entire membership extends best wishes on this memorable occasion and directs this resolution be presented on the 16th day of November, 2015, resolution 5707 by Council President Young and all members. Do you want to say something, sir? Sharon attended um, her actual birthday. Yeah, yes, there, um, she resides in a wonderful home, facility home, really, on uh, Rosalind Avenue. And I had the opportunity to participate in the 112th birthday celebration. And oh, there was lots of food and, and, and beverages, and she participated. It all took wonderful pictures. It was just a wonderful occasion. and. Uh, the the um, people that take care of her, it's like everyone there is part of the family. So very spiritual, clean, just very, the place is wonderful. So that, that helps in the longevity of life, keeping our seniors happy and healthy. So thank you. And don't, they don't think that Ms. Um, Jones is as quiet as she is now, because I've seen how feisty she is. <laughs> Could she tell us what the secret was for 112? Well, she told, well, us, she told us at age 99, no husband and no children. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so if we can get this picture, um, if somebody hold his head. Okay. Um, if we can just get this picture. I hope I, I hope I look as good as um, Miss Eddie look when I get to be at least 75. <laughs> okay, <so. laughs> 
and don't get fooled, y'all, by Miss Addie that she's um, really quiet because she's feisty when she needs to be. Okay. We'll now move the bills on second reader, Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. City Council Bill 15-0549, release of right of way, a 20-foot wide right of way through the former bed of Tyson Street for the purpose of authorizing the release and surrender by the Mayor and City Council of Baltimore, all of its interests in and to the 20-foot wide right of way heretofore granted the City of Baltimore through the former bed of Tyson Street, extending from West Franklin Street, northerly 380 feet, more or less, to West Center Street in the vicinity of North Howard Street and Park Avenue, the location and course of the 20-foot wide right-of-way to be released being shown on the plat numbered RW20-36387 in the Office of Department of Transportation and providing for a special effective date. Chair recognizes Councilman Stokes. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, on second reading, you have the uh, hearing on the release of right of way of 20 foot uh, wide, 20 foot wide right of way through the former bit of Tyson Street. Uh, we did hear it, and uh, everything was in line and in order, and all departments were favorable. So I recommend favorably. Second by Councilman Henry. All those in favor of approving this ordinance say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion is approved. This ordinance moved the third reader. City Thank you, Council Mr. President. Hold up, hold up. City Council Resolution 15, City Council Bill 15 0563, sale of property, a portion of the former bed of Cardiff Avenue, for the purpose of authorizing the Mayor and City Council of Baltimore to sell at either public or private sale. All its interest in a certain parcel of land located in block 6840 adjacent to lot 122nd that is part of the former bed of Cardiff Avenue and no longer needed for public use and providing for a special effective date. Chair recognize Councilman Stokes. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> President. Uh, committee found everything in order. We recommend favorable. Second by Councilman Henry. All, all those in favor of approving this ordinance say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion is approved. This ordinance moved the third reader. Urban Affairs and Aging Committee. City Council Resolution 15-0273R, Request for State Action, Restore Senior Center Operating Fund Cuts, for the purpose of calling on the Maryland Department of Aging to immediately reverse the more than two-thirds cut to Baltimore's Senior Center Operating Funds Award and restore fiscal year 2016 funding levels to at least those awarded in fiscal year 2015 to avoid further endangering the health and well-being of our vulnerable elderly population. Before I recognize uh, Councilwoman Middleton, I want to thank her and Councilwoman Clark. Um, Councilwoman Middleton uh, introduced the resolution to have these funds restored. And um, they had a very nice hearing, and I understand that um, we got these funds restored. So I want to just thank her personally for even having the foresight to put the resolution in. Thank you. Her, I said I said her and Mary Pat Clark, <laughs> and we all signed on to it. But they were the two that spearheaded it, and we want to. I want to publicly thank both of you for a job well done. Chair, recognize Councilwoman Middleton. Thank you, Mr. President. And this came at a, a wonderful time after we just had the celebration of uh, the 112th year of Miss Addie. But the committee heard this resolution on November 12, 2015, and. As you had mentioned prior to the hearing, the governor's office announced a one-time grant restoring the center's funds for the coming fiscal year, but we still have much work to do in trying to um, restore the formula so we can continue to have uh, that amount of money and more. So um, I thank my colleague of the 14th District for um, having me partner with her and, and working to, to get this moving along. Nonetheless, we had a very constructive and um, informative hearing. And if there's anything, before we uh, move the resolution, if there's anything my colleague would like to add, you're welcome to. Chair, recognize Councilwoman Clark. Well, I just want to thank the chair of the committee for promptly scheduling the hearing. And the very scheduling of the hearing resulted in um, getting our money back, I believe. 
So basically, we got we went from 45,000 up to 146,000 overnight. Um, because the senior directors got together and were fighting those cuts. So I'm very happy. It's not often that you get money back from government. Uh, but in this case, we did. Thank you to the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. And just putting a message out, we definitely have to be prepared so we can work with our state delegation to uh, continue to move this formula forward. and keep our funds moving because our senior centers are so important for us. And this, must, this might sound like a small amount of money, but it, it's affecting all of our centers, the gas and electric bills, um, just small programs, bus rides to, you know, to uh, back and forth with transportation. So um, we, we need to keep this money in our budget. Um, there are no amendments. I move the resolution favorable. Second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor of adopting this resolution say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. This motion is approved. This resolution is adopted. Again, thank you. Thank you. Third reader for final passage. City Council Bill 15-0557, Foreclosure Prevention Partnerships with Nonprofits and Financial Institutions for the purpose of supporting the effort to get delinquent mortgages in, into the hands of nonprofits for the purpose of saving <coughs> homes from foreclosure and creating affordable housing and committing the city of Baltimore to meet with financial entities with the goal of encouraging them to sell more delinquent mortgages to qualified nonprofits that have the funding and infrastructure to purchase, service, and hold the mortgages and a track record of doing so. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Kern, Henry Spector, Middleton, Mosby, Welsh, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Branch, Clark. This bill is approved. I mean, this bill is approved. I need to see you. City Council Bill 15-0558, Animal Fighting Paraphernalia, for the purpose of prohibiting the possession, sale, transfer, or manufacture of animal fighting paraphernalia with the intent to engage in or otherwise promote or facilitate an animal fight, defining certain terms, listing relevant factors, and determining whether an object is an item of animal fighting paraphernalia, imposing certain penalties, and generally relating to the object's use or intended or designed for use in the training, preparation, conditioning, or breeding for, in conducting, or otherwise in furtherance of animal fights. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Kern, Henry Spector, Middleton, Mosby, Welsh, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Branch, Clark. This bill is approved. City Council Bill 15-0561, approving the submission of an application to the State of Maryland for the designation of a regional institution strategic enterprise zone for the purpose of approving the designation of the University of Maryland at Baltimore as a qualified institution under the state's Regional Institution Strategic Enterprise Zone Program, approving and joining the application for designation of the Rise Zone at 873 West Baltimore Street, Baltimore, Maryland, and granting a real property tax credit for qualified properties in this Rise Zone. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Kern, Henry Spector, Middleton, Mosby, Welsh, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Branch, Clark. This bill is approved. Committee announcements. Committee announcement. Committee announcement. Chair recognized Councilman Kern. President, the Health Committee will meet on Tuesday, December 8, 2015, at 1 o'clock p.m. in Dewburn's Chambers to hear City Council Ordinance 15 0584 psychoactive substances. It's for the purpose of prohibiting the distribution of psychoactive substances. Defining certain terms, opposing administration, administrative sanctions, civil fines, and criminal penalties for violations. And that's to be heard on Tuesday, December 8, 2015, at 1 o'clock in New Burns Chambers. Committee announcements. Chair recognize Councilman Stokes. Thank you. you Mr. President, I stand to announce a, a hearing of taxation, finance, economic development of Council Bill 15 05. 7-9 on Tuesday, November 24th, uh, 10.45 a.m. here in chamber. I, sorry, did it again. I must move for suspension of rules. Second by Council Vice President Ron Singer. All those in favor of suspended rules announce a hearing. Say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The most encouraged chair recognize Councilman Stokes. Thanks. Taxation, Finance, Economic Development, Bill Number 15-0579, Tuesday, November 24th. Uh, 2015 here in Chambers, 10:45 a.m. It's Fire and Police Employees Retirement System. 
regular interest for the purpose of modifying the definition of regular interest for valuation purposes and providing for a special effective date. Thank you, Mr. President. Chair, we recognize Councilman Branch. Thank you, Mr. President. On Tuesday, January 5th, 2016, at uh, 4 p.m., the Public Safety Committee will hold a hearing on 15-0252R, Request for State Action, Baltimore City Police Commission, calling on the General Assembly to enact and the, and the Governor to sign legislation authorizing Baltimore City to establish a police commission composed of city residents, police commission composed of city residents appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the city council to oversee the Baltimore City Police Department. And also on Tuesday, January 5th, 2016 at 4 p.m., the Public Safety Committee will hold a hearing on 15-0253R, Request for State Action Strengthening the Civil <coughs> Civilian Review Board, calling on the Baltimore City Delegation to the Maryland General Assembly to introduce and secure enactment of legislation authorizing the Mayor and City Council to strengthen the Baltimore City Police Department Civilian Review Board. Thank you. Thank you. Committee announcement. Chair recognize Council Vice President Ross Singer. Mr. President, members of the Council, the Land Use and Transportation Committee will hold a hearing on Bill 15-0576 on Wednesday, December the 16th at 1 o'clock in the Council Chambers. The purpose is the Planning Commission, site-specific matters, notice and hearing on applications for final administrative decisions. Uh, the Committee will hold a voting session uh, on Bill 13-0299 on Monday, November the 30th at 9.55 a.m. This is zoning conditional use conversion of a one-family dwelling unit to a two-family dwelling unit in the R8 zoning district. This is a variance located at 2642 McGeldry Street. Uh, the committee will hold a hearing. Um, the committee will hold a Hearing on Bill 12-0152, this is Transform Baltimore in regards to the map amendments on December the 15th at 6 p.m. The location is Baltimore Polytech Institute located at 1400 West Cold Spring Lane and this is on channel uh, TV 25. The committee will also have a work session, voting session, which is televised. Uh, on, 12 that, on Bill 12-0152, which is Transform Baltimore. This is a work session and a voting session on January 4th at 5 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Uh, the committee will have a voting session um, uh, on 12-0152, Transform Baltimore. This is a voting session which will be on January 12th, 10 a.m. Uh, in the council chambers. This also will be televised. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, any more um, committee announcements? Okay, um, we have regular announcements. First, I want to uh, wish uh, Councilman Costello um, a happy birthday. His birthday is gonna be November the 23rd, am I correct? All right. Okay, and I um, want to uh, let everyone know that Larry Green, who is um, the director of Councilmatic Services, was voted Man of the Year by his church. So let's give him a hand. All right, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, had, Larry had to step away um, because he had to attend, I think it was a funeral at his church. So um, at church, that's why he's the Man of the Year. Okay, <laughs> um, uh, regular announcements. Chair recognized Councilwoman Middleton. Uh, I'd like to first of all have a um, request a moment of silence for all the recent um, killings we have been having here lately in the city of Baltimore. And I would um, particularly like to add uh, Kendall Fenwick to the name on that list, which we have been hearing about this um, single 24 year old father of three raising his children and uh, trying to take care of his home and do what's right and he's been a, a part of the community and just trying to keep his children safe and uh, this terrible thing happens to him. 
Um, I also would like to thank my colleague, uh, Brandon Scott, for joining me the last couple days. And uh, yesterday was really a wonderful day. And uh, he was putting up this, a fence and trying to fence in his home to keep uh, the criminals from going on his property. And yesterday, the uh, police department and community folks from everywhere just participated and completed uh, the surrounding of the house with the fence that he wanted. They took up donations and went back to the store and they, you know, put finish the um, aesthetics and the with the flowers and just really made the property like a sanctuary. So, um, you know, the family just appreciates all of the support that they are getting from the city and um, hopefully and prayerfully we will get the person that's, um, that, cr that committed this terrible crime. Uh, so again, a moment of silence for uh, Kendall Fenwick and his family. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman. Um, that day I was going to try to make it, but as you know, I had a meeting with the, um, had a meeting with the uh, community presidents around the same time that they were doing um, the uh, walk with, for the um, gentleman. And my condolences are to his family. And um, we really need to get community and uh, those who know these folk who are doing the killings in our city um, to really step up. And that means grandmothers, aunts, uncles, cousins need to start turning in relatives. You know, I mean, if we want to get control of the city and we really want to stop the murders, that means we all have to do our part. And if that means turning in your relatives, that's what you have to do. You know, I mean, we cannot continue 302 murders. I don't know how many it is now because we're sitting in here could be somebody else's son that was murdered. You know, it's, it's, we, we all want somebody to tell when it's our family. But when it's somebody else's family, nobody wants to tell. This stop snitching mentality has to stop. It sickens me to death when I hear on the news we talk about ISIS as terrorists in other parts of the world. When we have ISIS right here in Baltimore, and I don't care what nobody said. We have terrorists right here in the city of Baltimore that's killing our young men. And we need to th think about having boots on the ground right here in Baltimore until we get control of the senseless killings that's going on in our city. These guns are coming from somewhere. People know who is killing these people in the city. Yet we sit by idle and talk about we're afraid because there's no one to protect us hey, you could be next, and you're still not protected. If we are serious about changing the culture in Baltimore City, then we might have to change the way we think. And if it means turning our relatives in, that's what it means. I turned my own brother in. God bless his soul, he's dead now. He was out there dealing drugs, and I turned them in. If I can turn mine in, you can turn yours in, especially if they're killing. Regular announcement, any more announcements? Chair, recognize Councilman Kern. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President, for those words, and you're very much on point. That we have terror in the streets of Baltimore where our citizens are being murdered one by one. But I also want to ask for a moment of silence for the terror that's happening across the ocean with the loss of lives in Paris, France the other day. <coughs> we have Thanksgiving coming up a week from now and be thankful that our country is somewhat isolated from some of the activities which are happening around by the terrorist groups, but we're not totally out of the woods concerning terror in our cities, Washington DC, New York, Baltimore, any of the major urban areas could be prone to certain attacks by radical groups that want to express their displeasure with the United <coughs> States. Last week we honored our veterans of the holiday and we need to appreciate our armed forces, how they keep us as safe as we can be compared to other countries around the world. 
but I ask for a moment of silence for the victims. Even though there was only one U.S. citizen, supposedly that had been killed of the 130 folks that have died, maybe some more because of their injuries, but we need to recognize that we're not in a vacuum here. When things happen around the world, it could happen here too. So let's be vigilant. See something, say something. As Council President says, for the local terrorists that are killing our community members one by one, or for those that want to come in and do with some weapons of mass destruction, we need to be vigilant. If you see something, say something. Keep our city safe, our state safe, keep our communities safe. Thank you. Regular announcements. Chair recognizes Vice President Ross Singer. Mr. President and members of the Council, the next meeting of the City Council will be held on Monday, December 7th at 5 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Mr. President, I ask for a moment of silence for Kendall Fenwick's, uh, those who were killed in Paris, France, um, and also for our veterans. And if I may add, for um, all those who have been killed in the City of Baltimore, including that young father um, who was building the fence. Thank you. There being no further business, this concludes the one and fourth meeting of the 71st Turn of Baltimore City Council. Good night.